morning to all of you. So I'd like to thank all of you for making the journeys from all of your homes to come and be here today to celebrate 30 years of VJ Technologies. I do not have a date or a birth certificate that I can show you that the company was formed on the 15th of October, 1987. But I was sitting at the kitchen table with my wife, Mita, and we decided that was the day we were gonna do it. And I had come home from my day job where I was fired. It's not a joke, I'm serious. <laughs> There are several people here that knew me then. And several of the folks were fired the same day along with me. I would like for you to look at what the future of this business and industry looks like, what VJ Technologies looks like today and where it'll be another 30 years from now, hopefully having survived the next set of ups and downs. And rather than us tell you what the industry is doing and where we are at. We've invited all of our friends, partners, and colleagues to give you an idea of what the industry looks like several years from now. And that's who you will spend the rest of the day with. What we know and what we can do with X-rays, and not only with X-rays, but also with all the other uh, non-destructive technologies like ultrasound or thermal imaging or whatever you want, we, we can talk in the future more uh, about cognitive intelligence sensor systems yeah, for non-destructive monitoring and what is important not only in production, but in the product life cycle. So I'd like to skip the focus a little bit away from robotics into the general aspect of Industry 4.0 and how that mystic or mystic technology will enhance the current technologies that are evolving and how you can actually use it today. What I'd like to bring to the table is a slightly different perspective on what does it take to commercialize something, these technologies, and be successful. I was being asked, so you go from DR to CT to where? I think it all ends up in the cloud. We provide electrical, uh, gas, and steam service to New York area. Mechanical problems start happening sometimes, so if we detect them, that will work very good for uh, New York City, for people of New York City. Just to take uh, out that system, for inspection will probably cost a few hundred thousand dollars. If system fail and you need to repair it, it's going over the million dollar. But why green and why sustainable development is, in my opinion, and many others as well, is one of the grandest challenges of the 21st century. And just a few examples of what we're doing, and I'm going to focus on only two things. It's one is metals recovery, recycling, you want to call it, and the other one is uh, machine learning. What do we do with nuclear waste? Okay. Um, we talk about recycling, we talk about sustainable energy. You know, if you look at the uh, nuclear industry, this is the perfect one. And uh, let's, let's go through a little bit of the history. And uh, if you all, I know you all know this, you know, the uh, nuclear age started with the bomb. How long do we maintain the characterization of that waste? Will it change in physical, chemical, and radiological properties of the waste over that period of time? I did have a unique perspective in non-destructive testing in that I got to act not only as an equipment manufacturer, but also as a service provider, as a quasi-asset owner, and as part of an OEM and saw how NDT was used at every step of that process. And I want to talk a little bit about how that reflects back on growth for the next decades and beyond of NDT. I'd like to talk about some of the requirements for a fully automated scanner. Our approach is maybe a little different. We're trying to take physics models and physics centers and embed it in the scanner.